In this video you will learn how to create a simple blog app using Next.js, where the posts are created by markdown files. So all we need to do is create a new markdown file and fill it out with what we want to say in our blog post. And then everything from the URL to the full blog post to its listing on the home page will be generated automatically for us. Obviously this example blog that you are currently seeing isn't a professional app. I just threw it together very quickly to demonstrate the core principles that you need to know for this tutorial. And once you have got them down, you can move on to styling your own blog in however way that you want. So here we are in a new Next.js project. I've not made any modifications to this and I've literally just run the create next app command. For SEO purposes, we will create this header component in the components folder which we've just created. And I'm using React code snippets to create functional components really quickly. And then we'll import the head component from Next.js because that's what this functional component will return. And inside we'll just write the metadata that we want. Now we will delete the dummy content in the home page and make this header be the first thing to be rendered out on this page along with this h1. And obviously we imported this so that we could use it. Next we will open up our terminal and we will install the following dependencies. They all make it possible for us to work with markdown files. React markdown, the first dependency is for parsing and rendering the markdown files. And grey matter will pass the front matter of our blogs, which is the top part of the markdown file, in between three consecutive hyphens, but you'll see more about that later on. But we're not done with the configuration yet though. We should now create this file called next.config.js in our root directory. And the following should go inside. Again, I'll post a link to the project's completed GitHub page in the description box below, so you can just copy it from there. Now that we are all set up to read and pass our markdown files, we will create this content folder on our root, and it will hold all of our markdown files. I will now fast forward the process of me filling out these three markdown files. Now I won't focus on the actual content of these markdown files too much, because they all follow the same format and these blog posts are just snippets copied from other people's blogs and I won't explain the formatting either because the markdown syntax is very easy to learn and there are other videos out there if you want to learn it. But what I will focus on is the front matter data which as promised is sandwiched between a pair of three hyphens, one here, one there. The front matter data works like a JavaScript object in the sense that it is comprised of key value pairs. This means that the data here is separated from each other, allowing us to reach in and extract the individual pieces of data. As for the data that we are currently storing here, it is all necessary information that our project requires to work properly. The slug field is probably the most important one. Its value should match the file name of the markup file verbatim, just about the file extension at the end. So currently we're in Best Web Dev Technologies and you know the slug matches that name. And later on, you'll be using this value to create a URL that will point to the associated markdown file as the given URL, but more on that later though. Now, back on our index page, we will begin reading and passing the contents of these markdown files. We will create this function to eventually pass in the data of these markdown files into the, this index page component up here, but we will need to read them first, obviously. The file streamer dependency will allow us to do just that. It comes pre-installed with Next.js, so there's no need for us to install it. All we need to do is require it like so. Once required, we will use this readDOM method to read all of the file names in this content directory where we are holding all of the markdown files. And just to make things clear, we are reading the file names, not the actual files themselves. And this process.cwd method will always point to the root directory of the project that we are currently working within. This is why we can just append the contents file onto the end of it to access the content directory, which is a folder directly in the root directory. We do this because we want to make sure that we are only going to read the markdown files contained in this directory, and we do that with this filter method. Now obviously at the moment we only have markdown files in the directory, but that doesn't mean that this will always be the case. 
Therefore, we need to make this check to ensure that there are no errors further along down the line. So we will loop through this list of file names using the map method. And inside we will return the past content of the markdown file that is relevant to the file name that we are currently looping through. And that will be assigned to blog. We do that by first creating the path to the markdown file that we currently have the name of. Then we use file streamer to pass the content of this file. And finally we return the contents of this past file. And this will construct an array of the past contents of all the markdown files that we have. Because when you return something with the map method, that summit could be an individual item in the array that is eventually returned with the map method. Finally, we will make this array of past markdown files a property of the index page component by returning the data as a key value pair on the props object. Now that we have access to this data in the index page component, we can begin to use the grey matter dependency on every piece of markdown data that we have in the array to be able to work with the front matter data as key value pairs. The reason why we didn't do this before is because the end result of using grey matter on a markdown file is its data type is unsuitable for being returned with the get static props function. Therefore, you'll only use grey matter on the files once the data has been returned by the function and it's been passed into this home index page component as a property. So we'll just add the props argument so that we can actually access it. And we'll also need to import grey matter. So we will loop through the array of markdown data and return the past result of using the matter function on each markdown file to construct a new array of markdown files that we can extract front matter from and that will be in real data. Now the actual front matter data for each markdown file is stored in the data property which holds a JavaScript object in and of itself to separate the key value pairs in the front matter. We will therefore extract this data into a new array list items. And in the return statement, we will loop through the survey so that we can list out all of the blogs on the home page. That eventually users will be able to click on an individual blog post to go to read the blog in full. We want each blog post to be its own components so that we can extract our application out of it. Inside we'll import the link component from Next.js. We will use it to direct the user to the blogs full page. This component will be given a property of blog. It will be the past data from an individual markdown file. So what we are doing here is we are rendering out some of the information from a markdown's front matter section into JSX so that users will be able to see the information on the screen. As for the class names, you won't really be focusing on that too much because this isn't a styling tutorial as it's up to you to customize your blog on your own. Next, we will use a link dependency to direct the user to a page where they will be able to see the blog post in full when they click on the blog post title. Obviously, at the moment, this will not work because we have not created that page yet. And when we do, it needs to be in the post folder because, as you can see, the link is directing to that post route. And then we will finish with a description of the blog post. Again, this information is coming from the front matter section. With this created, we can go back to our index page and import it from there. And this key property doesn't actually do anything. We have set it to be equal to the current index of the loop because that is a unique piece of information. And React requires a unique piece of information to be passed into every parent component's key property when it is being rendered out by a loop. Then we will render out a blog post component for each markdown file stored in the array, passing in the markdown property to this component be its blog property like we said we would and this key property doesn't actually do anything we have set it to be equal to the current index of the loop because that is a unique piece of information and react requires a unique piece of information to be passed into every parent component's key property when it is being rendered out by a loop i will now start the development server so we can see what we've done and as you can see, we have got stuff on the screen and it's relevant to our markdown files, but obviously it's not styled yet. Now I'll be using sass to style this blog because it makes nesting easier, a very important characteristic when we want to encapsulate certain stylings to specific components, like how we do in React. Again, I won't be going over how sass works or how you should be styling this project. It's up to you to figure out those things out on your own if you don't know already. 
purpose of this tutorial is to teach you how to work with Markdown files in Next.js, not how to style a website. And with the SAS file compiled, we will require it in this underscore app.js file so that it will be rendered on every single page. And so now if you go back, as you could see, it's styled how it was at the start. One thing that I will point out is that these blogs are not rendered out in any particular order. But in the opening demonstration, they were ordered by their creation date from the front matter. Now you won't actually be ordering the blog post in this tutorial for the sake of time, but it isn't hard to do. And if you really get stuck, then I'll post a link to the completed project's GitHub page in the description box below so that you can go there to see how I did it. So what we now need to do is create the page that will display the blog post in its entirety, because at the moment, clicking on one of these links will just take us to an error page and that's because we haven't created the page yet. So we will create the post file because remember that was part of the URL that we sent the users to. And as for the file itself, its name will be within square bucket because we want to direct the user to this file regardless of what comes after slash post slash in the URL. The data that comes after here will be treated as a query parameter by us with the name of blog, hence the name in the square bucket. Inside we will import the header component because this is a new page now along with React Markdown because we'll be displaying the content in the Markdown's body in this file and not just the information from the front matter and grey matter because we'll be displaying some of that data as well. And let's not forget to create the actual functional component so that this page actually renders something. And we'll just call it blog post instead because obviously that returns an error. And now you'll create this get server side props function because it is called an every request to the page, meaning that the content displayed will always be relevant to the blog post that the client just clicked on. And because it gives us access to this context argument, which we can extract the query parameter from. And so you will extract this query parameter along with importing file stream again. Then we will read the contents of the markdown file that was identified by the file name that was given to this root in the form of a query parameter under the name of blog. And this data member came from the slug property on each of our markdown files front matter sections, which was then given to the redirect of the link component that sends the user to this file. So that now inside of this file, we can access that query parameter from the URL and use it to locate and then pass the markdown file with the same name as the query parameter in the relevant directory. And this data will be given to our blog page as a property. Once inside, we'll pass this data with grey matter so that we can get access to its front matter data. As said before, data will contain the front matter data, but now we are extracting content as well, and that will be the rest of the markdown data aside from the front matter section. And like with before, we will render out the relevant data from the front matter section. But underneath, we will render out the content from the body of the relevant markdown file. And to do that, we will use the React Markdown component that we just imported. It will take in the Markdown data in content and convert it into JSX. And this will be rendered to the screen just like everything else. And so now if you go back, hopefully you won't get an error, uh, error anymore. And so yeah, as you could see, it actually is displayed. I mean, we're going to have to style this a bit because this image uh, isn't right. So we'll just style it now real quick. So here's the styling, again won't go into that in much detail, but now we'll make sure that it's updated. As you can see, everything's working as it should. Again, these aren't ordered, actually wait they are, but that's just by coincidence. But of the way that we created the markdown files, but if we created them in a different uh, way, then they actually wouldn't be in the correct order based on their date. The date's given here, not the actual creation date. And in the GitHub project, you will find that it's actually ordered by the creation date here. And you can find out if you go in the GitHub, if you click on the link. But anyway, that's the end of the video now. You could find out that stuff for yourself. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you benefited from it. And if you have any uh, suggestions for improvement, then I would appreciate it if you post it in the comments box below so that you could help me improve and also if you have any queries then I'll answer them to the best of my ability in the description 
But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something from it. And peace out. Have a great day.